Wow, so um, we, Lando and I, are off to one of the highest points in Castleton, if not the highest point. And um, that is where we are going to crack open a brew that I've got in my bag. And uh, yeah, we're gonna just uh, talk about how it is, how it tastes, what it's like, and um, hopefully if it's a success or not. So uh, there's the boy dog. We got the beer in the bag, let's do it. Right, off we go. Almost at the top of this other hill. We have come from the top of that hill because basically there are too many people around today and uh, there's just too many of them to stop and be able to review a pint. I am struggling, Whew. but we're almost there. So we are gonna give it a go. The next shot you see will be me and my pint. Okay, so finally managed to get to a spot up on this hill which isn't filled with other ramblers and um, we've got the brew out now. So this is a stout. If you click up in the video that you'll see somewhere on the screen right now, you'll be able to see my uh, brew day video of it. And um, there were just some issues that I went through on this brew day. Um, which were partly because I rushed through this. Now, one of them was not having used this malt sooner. I ordered it ages ago. It took me so long to get round to doing this. It took me about, I don't know, I'm probably going to say about four to six months. Now, it was sitting outside in my shed, um, which is the coldest part of the house. But nevertheless, it did go through summer months. So um, I imagine the temperature in the shed at some point would have been, you know, up to around the late teens on the hottest days of the year. Like I say, it was in its bag, airtight and sealed, wrapped up in a cardboard box, put on the shelf. So hopefully, you know, that just means the degradation, the quality of the grain slowed down. And, you know, it was still reasonably healthy grain to use on a brew day. Another one of the problems I faced was um, I wrapped up my fermenter in um, two towels and a jacket like this, really. I put it in um, the shed uh, about three weeks ago or something like that, um, hoping that it would just stay warm uh, because the shed does drop down to, you know, um, around six degrees in this weather. Um, and without the heat mat underneath the fermenter and um, the towels wrapped around the FV, it struggles to stay up to fermentation temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. So um, I wrapped it up in two towels and a jacket and I went away to London for the weekend. And when I came back and went into the shed, the fermenter was at 31.4 degrees Celsius. Now that is an issue because, um, well, it's an issue because yeast works in optimum temperatures and it ain't 31 degrees Celsius. Um, Celsius or centigrade? Celsius, I think so. So then I unwrapped it all, went in 12 hours later and it was down to 22 degrees. Left it like that for a few days and then went back and done a secondary fermentation in a new FV. I just kind of think the whole deal with rushing something like this is just never gonna yield the best results. Um, so I took the secondary gravity reading on my refractometer and the figure that came out on the refractometer was 1.023. So if you don't remember what the original gravity reading was, it was 1.04. The secondary reading was 1.023, which meant a final ABV of 2.24%. Now I haven't taken another reading after it's conditioned in the bottle for about 12 days. Um, I'm hoping that it got a bit stronger. Um, but yeah, those were all the issues that we ran into. But nevertheless, we have about 40 bottles of it. I drank one last night because I wanted to kind of get into my head 
the overriding features and flavors and notes and the aroma of it before I reviewed it. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. So what we're gonna do now is a tasting up here in the peaks, high up on the hill, for you lovely folks at home to see what it's like. Okay, the pour. Nice little bit of hiss. And uh, let's do this. Now this has been in my bag, being agitated, I would say, along the walk. Um, last night when I poured it in, it did need a little bit of movement in the glass to give it a nice head. But there we go. We do have a beautifully poured pint of stout. Now it has a kind of deep, dark, reddish hue to it. Um, hey Lando. So yeah, it has a lovely reddish hue. Try and get the sun to go through that. Um, but to the eye, to the human naked eye, it is deep black in color. That smells glorious. I'm no joke of a lie. That smells wonderful. Um, being up here out in the open hills, you know, clearing my mind, making sure that get the nose right in there. Now, one thing I will say, which I said last night to the missus, was this doesn't have that typical homebrew smell, which I kind of pick up in all my home brews. And I think it's something to do with the fermentation process. Now, like I said, this wasn't the best one, but, but it does taste nice. It's got that warm, roasted malt, sweet, chocolatey, coffee kind of smell. Look at the head on that. Nice head retention. Now, one of the problems I faced in my last brew when I made a porter was that it was a little bit too fizzy, almost like a Vimto in the, when, when you drank it, when you sipped it. Um, that was a complaint from the missus. And yeah, I don't want my beers to come out like soft drinks, but this has a nice amount of head on it. Smells really nice. So uh, let's give it a taste. Cheers, Lando. Lovely, refreshing. That is at around seven degrees right now out here in the cold. Stop. Stop. No noise. Come here. Come here. Bribe this dog. I just said I wouldn't, but I'm going to bribe him. So yeah, um, it has a really lovely mouthfeel on this. Um, almost kind of velvety. Uh, Oh, I would say that, you know, a Guinness is a bit watery once you get past the creamy head, but this has a kind of smoothness that goes into ultimately a nice bitterness at the end. Now, it's not that strong in the mouth. It's a nice drink, honestly. It is, um, it's one of those where it's like two or three by the fire on a cold winter's day after a walk such as this, and it would do you right. Nice. Mm. I'm just annoyed that I rushed through the brew day and I didn't get the strength out of it that it should be at. It should be at around 4.6%. We haven't even reached half of that. But yeah, that's it from me now. Cheers, thanks for joining me up on the hill. It's been a marvelous walk. It's been lovely to just, you know, find a bit of peaceful time to be able to do a review like this. Um, I hope it's not been too windy. I hope you've heard everything I've said. Hope you love the shades um, as much as I do. And yeah, just, you know, here's to the next one. Right, well, the boy dog and I will see you soon. And I'm going to enjoy the rest of this before we walk all the way back over there to where we started. Right, cheers. <laughs> Mm. Different, man. It's the best beer garden in the world. See you later.